Chapter 15, Blood Cultures, Arterial IVs, and Special Collection Procedures. This again goes over the chapter objectives for this particular chapter. Blood culture is collected from patients who have fevers of unknown origin, so they have no clue why the fever um, spiked. During the course of bacterial infection, bacteremia or septicemia may result, and blood cultures aid in identifying the specific bacterial organism causing the infection. We will perform these blood cultures, and we draw two sets from each arm in order to identify that organism. Important difference in blood culture procedure, the healthcare worker must explain the procedure in greater detail to the patient because it does require us sticking the patient twice. The puncture site must be decontaminated so that it's sterile, which basically means we cannot retouch the site once we clean it. The type of collection tubes used must contain culture media that enable bacteria to grow under laboratory conditions, and these bottles are glass. The timing and number of blood cultures obtained must be clearly indicated, and that would be on the requisition. Possible interfering factors, blood culture specimens. Blood culture specimens must be collected first in our order of draw. Do not scrape the needle across the skin. And we're going to fill the anaerobic blood culture bottle vial first, except for butterfly assembly, which we'll go over later on. And blood culture container with contudes, contains resin and beads. Usually two sets of blood cultures are ordered and the venipuncture is performed at two different sites. Since reflux into the media collection bottles is a concern, it is recommended not to collect blood directly from a tube holder needle assembly into a culture collection bottle. We will use a butterfly for this procedure. The blood should be collected through a butterfly attached to a tube holder or directly into a syringe. This goes over the site preparation, which I will have you review. We will do a detailed lab on this in class for live draws. There is two different ways we prep the site. One way is using chlorhexidine gluconate, which has alcohol and chlorhexidine mixed together. Um, the other prep has, um, oh, this prep has the first one, I apologize, has alcohol first, then chlorhexidine, where the second prep actually has it built in. One is a circular motion from the inside out. The other is a back and forth vigorous scrub. It depends upon the device you use to clean the site. This is a one-step 30-second applicator. This is just another um, picture of a scrub preparation. This is the chlorhexidine swab we will be using in class. Again, this is this, the procedure using the syringe. I will have you review this on your own as we will have a detailed lab on this in class. This is how we would transfer blood from a syringe to the test tube, or in this case, the blood culture bottles. Again, we'll have a detailed lab on this in class. We're gonna start with the anaerobic microbiology um, bottle and place it in an upright position. We're gonna place the blood transfer device on the bottle and fill to desired amount. Prior to filling the bottle, we will clean the caps with alcohol. You're going to fill the aerobic bottle after the anaerobic bottle. You're going to fill other blood collection tubes according to order of draw after that point. Never push on the syringe, plunger, and allow the vacuum into the microbiology bottles to pull the blood into the bottles and tubes. If the amount of blood culture is only um, or less than 5 mLs, you're going to place the entire amount in the aerobic bottle, and for infants and children, about 1 to 3 mLs of blood can usually be collected for bacterial culture. Use blood culture bottles that are designed specifically for pediatric patients. And again, this is just going over the procedure using Safety Butterfly for blood cultures. Um, we will transfer the blood to the microbiology bottles via direct draw adapter, and please be aware this needs to be hand delivered to the lab. You can choose to put tape on the arm. I would advise against it, only because then you have to take the tape off, and if you need to redirect the needle at all, it could cause complications. 
Again, we're going to transfer the blood to the anaerobic vial first. If only 3 ml or less of blood is collected, we're then going to place the entire amount in the aerobic bottle. For infants and children, again, only 1 to 5 ml of blood can usually be collected for bacterial culture. Use blood culture bottles that are designed specifically for pediatric patients. Some facilities say about 1 to 3 ml for children. Um, we actually go based on weights. So after the initial site preparation stops are described earlier, the venipuncture culture collection performed uh, venipuncture by, by evacuate tube system. Collect blood into the SBS tubes and then fill other tubes as required. We're going to document the type of specimen obtained and the amount or the time of specimen collection. Um, because for blood culture bottles, we need to, if we get two sets, we're going to space them 15 minutes apart. So you're going to document the amount of specimen obtained. So did you um, retrieve 5 mLs, 10 mLs? And then we're going to also put the time. Discard the safety needle, evacuate tube holder, needle assembly, or butterfly blood collection set in the sharps container. We're going to discard blood-soaked gauze pads and contaminated items in an appropriate biohazard waste container. Blood cultures initial the patient's identification label, indicate the time and date of collection on the label, and indicate the site of collection. So if we were to draw from the right arm, left arm, right hand, left hand, we will also put that in attached label to each vial or tube. Do not change needles after collecting blood for cultures as it can lead to needle stick injury. Glucose tolerance test. It's an effective diagnostic tool for patients who have symptoms suggesting problems in carbohydrate metabolism, such as diabetes. Complete instructions to patient for preparation for a GTT test. They're going to eat normal balanced meals for at least three days before the test and fast for 8 to 12 hours. Drink water but not tea, coffee, and they should not smoke or chew gum. We don't want them to exercise during the procedure as that would increase their metabolism and break down the glucose faster. And do not take the test if you've had illness in the last two weeks. When performing the GTT, depending upon the facility, they might obtain a fasting blood specimen from point of care meter. If the result is normal, then the patient may be given the load of glucose. However, if they come up as abnormal, we would then discontinue the procedure going forward. We'd obtain blood and urine samples at intervals. Um, depending upon the test, GTT can be or ordered in a one-hour, two-hour, or three-hour period, and each specimen, specimen is then analyzed for glucose content. This is how we would perform the test. So we instruct the patient to drink a standard dose of glucose. They have to finish the drink within five minutes and encourage the water intake throughout the procedure, depending upon the policies and procedure of the lab. And when the patient finishes drinking the solution, the time is noted, and then we will draw them at 30, 60, 120, and 180 um, minutes, depending upon the test that's ordered. And again, after collection, the specimens will go to the lab. If serum samples are collected, again, we use a serum separator tube and allow the specimen to clot. We use the gray tap tube. It has preservative in it to prevent the breakdown of glucose and can be used for this procedure as well. This gives a graph of the glucose tolerance test results. Um, so you can see the difference in um, minutes and then the plasma glucose volume. Interfering factors with the GTT test. Nausea and vomiting may occur early during the GTT test. If the patient vomits within the first 30 minutes, we're going to discontinue the test and reschedule for another day. If the patient vomits or becomes faint later in the test, have him or her lie down and complete the testing. Postprandial glucose test, this is after a meal, is used to screen patients for diabetes. The day of the test, the patient should eat a breakfast or orange juice, cereal with sugar, toast, and milk to provide an approximately 100 gram of glucose load. And then the patient blood sample is taken two hours after the patient finishes eating breakfast. The glucose level is then determined. The physician can decide further carbohydrate metabolism tests, such as GTT tests, are needed. 
Modified oral glucose tolerance tests, basically, instead of having the patient eat a meal, we're going to actually give the patient a 75 gram load of glucose, and this would be under the two hour glucose tolerance test. And then the blood is collected two hours after the patient has taken the glucose drink. There is various glucose tolerance tests, and I just want to go back. There's the one hour, two hour, and three hour, and I will discuss these further in class. Lactose tolerance test. This is difficulty in digesting lactose. It's a milk sugar. Invasive method. The measurement of breath hydrogen content. It does not involve the collection of blood. Breath samples are collected as patient exhales, and the exhale gases are analyzed for hydrogen. This measures the ability of a person's intestines to digest lactose, and it is used to diagnose a deficiency of intestinal lactase. The blood test method requires us to give the patient 50 grams of lactose, and then we will be drawing their blood at 5, 10, 30, 60, 90, and 120 minutes for plasma glucose levels. The patient is intolerant to lactose, his or her blood glucose level will increase by no more than 20 milligrams from the fasting sample level. Please be aware bathroom needs to be located near the patient because patients who are lactose intolerant may become ill during the test. The test then would be canceled and the patient would be ruled as being positive for lactose tolerance um, if they could not handle the lactose drink. Arterial blood gases, we do not perform these as phlebotomists, but respiratory does, but we need to know the basic procedure and why we perform these. They provide useful information about the respiratory status and the acid-base balance of patients with pulmonary disease or disorders. Arterial blood rather than venous blood is used. The radial artery puncture site is located on the thumb side of the wrist, as located in this picture below. Brachial artery puncture site is an alternative site for blood collection for arterial blood gases. It's located in the cubital fossa of the arm. And the femoral artery located in the groin area of the leg lateral to the femur bone. Lacks collateral circulation is used for patients with cardiovascular disorders and it's the last choice for arterial puncture since it's so invasive. Radial ABG procedure, I'm going to have you review this on your own. Please be aware that the patient has to be in a stable state for at least 30 minutes prior to the procedure. Again, I'm going to have you review these slides on your own. We'd obviously choose the non-dominant hand as our best choice so the patient doesn't have to try to use that hand right after the procedure. We're never going to use a thumb for palpating because it has a pulse that may be confused with the patient's pulse. So there should only be one line right here. So apologize. It looks like there should be two terms when there's only one. Avoid any site that has a hematoma or that was previously used for arterial puncture. The modified Allen test. This is how we check for collateral circulation um, in the radial artery. To determine if it can be used for ABG, it's performed before using the radial artery for blood collection for ABG analysis and make certain that the ulnar and radial arteries are providing collateral circulation to the hand. We compress both arteries with your index and middle fingers and ask the patient to tightly clench his or her fist. You're going to ask the patient to open his or her hand and release the pressure on the ulnar artery. Now we'll go over this in detail in class. The Allen test is positive when the hand fills with blood within 5 to 10 seconds. If the color does not return the hand after 5 to 10 seconds, the Allen test is negative. A negative Allen test indicates the inability of the ulnar artery to supply blood to the hand adequately and shows a lack of collateral circulation. The radial artery should not be used in a negative Allen test. We want the test to be positive. So when we put pressure, as shown in figure A, on the ulnar and radial arteries, we should see the hand change. And then once we release from this, that one side, we should see circulation come back. And I will show you what a negative and positive uh, Allen test looks like. Once the radial artery site is chosen, we're going to clean it with chlorhexidine swab. And then there is a local anesthetic that will be applied. No tourniquet is required but because the artery has its own strong blood pressure. And they use a pre-filled heparinized safety syringe to collect the sample. 
and hold the syringe like you would hold a dart. This will complete chapter 15, part one. Please view chapter 15, part two to continue with this.